Hello fellow fishers, and happy water change Wednesday to you. I've been planning on making this video for a while now, but I keep on, kept on forgetting. So I finally was able to make it today. So, today's video is about my, what I call my quote unquote automatic water change system. And you might be saying to yourself after you watch this video, hey that was clickbait because it's not really automatic, but from my perspective, it is. So first we see my blonde guppy, uh, my blonde guppy um, tank, which is just running on a sponge filter in the back. And actually it's unheated. I want to see how they did with unheated. Um, trying to keep it down to just but you see that uh, cobra pattern, I guess you would say, of males. What I'm trying to keep in here, trying to breed that out. Um, in the, with the blonde guppies, there's one right there, nice looking, I guess you'd call it cobra pattern of males. Um, then trying to take out the ones that either A, don't look like that at all, or B, the ones that have like this reddish <clears throat> uh, finish to them. I don't really like it as much. I'm trying to selectively breed that. Uh, those I take out just go into my mud guppy tank and uh, I give those away to students and, and, and anybody local that wants uh, free guppies. So anyways, uh, there's, a, there's probably a better shot of the male right there in the middle that I like that I, I want to breed for with the blonde guppies. I think it's a lot nicer looking. Um, this Eventually my plan is to turn this tank into a uh, shrimp tank so I'm keeping it unheated and um, it just has the sand as the substrate and some java moss and then on the top is some I think that's rickia I think that's what it is and then lots of duckweed actually it's covered in duckweed except for this one thing that I've I've uh, I made it this week it's really simple I'll show you the top view of it uh, it's just uh, airline tubing let me clean it off here Maybe this should be a new title of the video, I don't know, but um, I just rinse it off and then I clear a little space and guppies are dumb and they run into my fingers sometimes on purpose. Sorry if this is way too much making you dizzy or whatever on the camera, but I put the ring back in there. <coughs> Excuse me, I have some congestion going on. And uh, it keeps the duckweed out for the most part. That duckweed, I can get that out. And it's a lot easier and then I can feed them right here I can do some water changes from right here and I can uh, you know catch some guppies from right here if I need to selectively breed take out the ones I don't want and uh, so I, I really like it. I'll show you a better example in a different tank but first an update on my blonde guppy tank but they're you know they're breeding there's you might notice in the back there are some babies and some nice hard water stains too um, where are the babies? The babies are usually towards the Java moss. Maybe they're hiding really well in Java moss right now. Yeah, they've been in the Java moss. I don't see them right now. But finally, uh, I have my first batch of fry from these blonde guppies. I got these blonde guppies from a uh, former student's parent. There's a gup uh, there's a fry right right there towards the middle right going towards the top right now there's a blonde guppy fry so as i got these from a former student uh, her dad breeds uh guppies and betas and this is one of the strains he has i guess he had too many of them so she brought in a bag full of them so i put them in here i'm going to try to breed these and see how they turn out see what i can get out of them but um which they all are right now. I was up towards the top because I thought I was going to feed them. They were just fed. Anyways, about my automatic water change system, I'll say as I transition over to my Celestial Pearl Danio Jungle in here. At the very back. My automatic water change system is uh, the beginning of the year I taught my students how to do a water change. And um, and a few students back then were pretty interested in it and wanted to know more about it. So those that were interested, I gave them a more one-on-one, -on -one, uh, smaller group lesson on how to do water changes and uh, trying to find the CPDs in here. There's one on the, 
over there. Anyways, uh, gave them a more small group uh, lesson on how to do water changes. Wait, is that Dario Dario or is that a Celeste Pearl Daniel? So anyways, uh, taught them how to do water changes and ever since then, a few of them, about two or three of them, have actually asked uh, every week, every Wednesday, they're like, hey, it's Wednesday, can we do water changes? I'm like, absolutely, yes. So, in theory, I guess you would say, I got the water change system set up, and then ever since then, it just runs on its own every week. All right, now I'm over to the panda guppy tank, slash another panda, another guppy experiment. There's a male panda guppy right there showing off for a female that is already pregnant. And there is some panda guppy fry swimming around in there. I know this water is cloudier, uh, but it's much better than what it used to be. There's some more fry up and over there. I know this isn't the prettiest tank, but I think it's a lot more natural. I like to take care of things uh, Corey's way uh, or a lot or with the ecosystem. You see a lot of fry swimming around here. There's probably close to 10 fry in here right now. I have two or three more at home in a separate tank that when I first had them at home. But the experiment I have going on here is these are higher temperatures, like 82. And just for this batch of babies, I'm gonna keep it at that temperature and see if it has any impact on the number of males. I don't think it will, but I wanna see if that does, just so I can finally debunk that that uh, myth as far as my uh, guppy breeding goes. Um, in the blonde guppy tank, it's at room temperature, so it's unheated. And I want to see if that has any impact. And I know that according to science experiment, you know, to have it be a valid experiment, I would have the same strain of guppies and everything else would be the same. But I, I for, for my purposes and my, uh, my purposes and in my, you know, experiences and knowledge, this is good enough. I have one tank that's heated rather high. One tank, actually my 29 gallon is heated at a moderate level at 74 to 76. And then um, one tank is unheated. So let's see if that has any impact on the number of males. Uh, lots of debate out there. I don't think it will have any impact, but we'll see. After these fry uh, get to a point at which I can tell the males from females, I will cut the heater down to a more reasonable level of 74 degrees because so I do not want to burn these guppies out. Uh, also, it's really hot, like, I mean, as far as fish tanks go, it, it's warm water. It's A2, that's like blue, germ blue rams or cichlid temperature there. So, just a little experiment I have going on here and I'm pretty happy because really these fry have been born in the past few weeks and it's the first batches of fry that have come out and there's still a few more females in here that are still extremely pregnant. Um, I think, yeah, the one is in the very back, you see her towards the top right, she's very pregnant. She should be popping out babies any day now, I would hope by the end of the week. But um, anyway, so that's my automatic water change system is I've taught the students to do it and they come in, they ask me every Wednesday during home base, like, hey, can we uh, change the water? I'm like, absolutely. And you know, some some weeks um, I had to give them special instructions like, hey, this one only do a water change slash gravel vac on this side because there's babies over on this side or hey this one watch out for the babies or um, she did like uh, it's not she's so actually a, there was uh, some boys and girls but um, it is nice to see girls get in, in, into the hobby too um, but this week it was a girl who did the water change and um, she asked what was it she asked what was it it was about the babies that were in the way, and then she asked about oh, it was about the 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 guppy babies, and that they I uh, said they should be they're big enough to where they usually get out of the way. Also, that's what it was. She was excited about these du anti duckweed rings, which here's the top view of this one. Um, you see, there's a little bit less duckweed in there, a lot easier to manage, and put some food in there. The guppies can find it easier. That the food doesn't just sit on top of the duckweed. And literally all it is is a piece of airline uh, with one end cut at an extreme angle so that uh, it 
more easily inserts into the other end and uh, it works. It works for a few days. Um, I have it in my larger 29 gallon tank as well and I really like it. It helps to keep some duckweed off of you know nets and hands and food and just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, and this way I can still have the benefits of duckweed as far as absorbing the excess nutrients in the water while uh, still not having it completely take over my arm whenever I dip it in there or a net whenever I dip it in there. So I hope you didn't find this video to be too much of a clickbait because it's technically not automatic water chain system but from my perspective it is automatic because I got it set up and you know teach them two or three times, show them how to do it and just let them go and so far the students that are caring for the tanks are they're learning a lot of stuff they're asking lots of great questions um, I haven't lost any fish because of it um, they don't they're very careful about the babies um, they're very careful with the fish uh, they also love to come in and feed them they feed them uh, first thing in the morning and then they come towards the end of the day and feed them again they they know how much to feed each one and my feeding practices for for you know the different fish and you know which ones like certain meat. so they're definitely starting to learn uh, a lot of the fish keeping uh, practices and, and you know really good things and they're able to learn without making many uh, mistakes from someone like me who has already made lots of mistakes so that you know, when one day if they do decide they want to set up their own tank, they'll be more ahead of someone else that's just completely new to the hobby. So I think it's really cool. I really enjoy seeing students get excited about fish. They really get excited whenever they see babies. So if you are ever thinking about having a uh, fish tank in your classroom, um, definitely do it. And I highly recommend guppies for that because super easy, super simple, really hardy. And the amount of babies that come out, the students get really excited about seeing the babies. And um, it teaches them about natural selection and you can teach about artificial selection and so many lessons. So I highly recommend a fish tank in your classroom. Definitely guppies. Um, if you want one to go slower, the breed slower, you know, go with platies. Sure, they're fine in a 10 gallon. Get a few platies and they'll breed and see what happens. But I like guppies. Guppies have a lot more variation. And, a lot cooler strains. Let me switch back over to the Blanc and be taking so it's a little bit prettier, I think, because it's clear. I just love the contrast of the black sand with the light colored guppies that are actually too much for the lighting on the camera. There's a nice shot of that male once again. It's look look like a male a blonde lyre tail guppy is what it's starting to look like. But anyway, so I hope you didn't find this to be too much of a clickbait. If you did, I apologize. I don't make clickbait ish videos very often. Um, hope you learned something about these let me pan up here uh, about these uh, anti-duckweed rings. Hope that is a helpful tip. I mean it's super easy. It takes me uh, less than a minute to make it and it didn't cost me anything because I had that laying around as excess uh, airline tubing. Um, so and it's very effective. This way you can still keep duckweed like I said and it doesn't get in your way as much. So if you found this video enjoyable, informative, educational, whatever, give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. I'd really appreciate if you could share this on social media. Uh, help spread the word of my channel. Uh, it's mostly fish tank stuff, uh, as you can see here. Um, I will be coming out with a really exciting Fry Friday video this week. I already have it uh, recorded. Um, it's some pretty exciting news. And then I already have next Friday's Fry Friday video already recorded as well. Um, also even more excitement to add on to the Fry Friday excitement though you can never tell by my voice I know so if you want to keep in touch and stay tuned with that be sure to click that notification bell down below check out my links down below to my local fish store click and fish um, uh, if you're in the local area and uh, you're wanting these blonde guppies um, they might even eventually be available in click and fish as will the panda guppies maybe if not, then they will be at my local fish club, uh, James River Aquarium Society, in a few months. I will, be, I will start bringing them in for the auctions in, in the summertime. Uh, so I hope you uh, definitely turn on the not notification bell. Check out the links below. Um, to my channel t-shirt and Amazon affiliate links. And that fish has a thing hanging out of it. What is that?
I think it's a piece of feces. Oh, funny story. Um, I posted it. I will post it today later on, but I looked back in class today during a, a time when the students were changing from one part of lesson to another as a, they were up and moving around and stuff, and I looked up and there was 10 boys gathered around my 29 gallon fish tank. I was like, what is going on? I was like, let me guess. I was like, is there a fish back there that has a really long piece of poop hanging out of it? And they're like, yes. That's what they were all looking at. 10 middle school boys were staring at a fish tank because one of the fish had a really long piece of poop hanging out. Not surprised at all. Not surprised. If you know middle school boys or boys in general, you would not be surprised either. So, turn on the notification bell, subscribe, share, check out the links below. Comment with any questions or video requests or comments, anything you have in the video. Greatly appreciate it. I try to answer questions as quickly as possible. I mean, I always respond to comments, but I usually respond to questions um, a lot faster. So, Stay tuned and stay fishy, people.